You know what? I learned so much by experimenting with diets and cleansing systems, which evidently make you thinner, healthier, and as a side effect, happier, that I was confused. What exactly should I share with you first? But I guess I will try to share it all in consecutive order, hoping that you will let me know in the process what you like the most. Losing weight, being happy, or becoming healthier. Hi, my name is Elsa Vransky. And I'm so excited that I have matured enough and collected enough evidence so I can finally share my health and wealth magical discoveries with you. After 11 years of research and practice, I cannot wait to reveal it all. Imagine living your life and not being in control of your health, being constantly dependent on doctors and pills, not knowing what diet is best for your current way of life, project or goal, being absolutely convinced that it's not possible keeping a good healthy diet without starving, not being able to easily maintain your perfect body shape or get more body strength or mind clarity at will. Well, that was my life for a long time and then it changed. You may think it's not possible or very hard, but I promise you, it's absolutely possible and not hard at all. Let me first shed some light on my uh, long and eventful journey that has brought me to my current success level in health. I am now 40 years young. I am fit and healthier than I have ever been, but it was not always so. I have been growing up constantly getting sick with almost all illnesses known to men. I lived like that for a long time thinking that that's normal of life. But with time and uh, getting access to more useful information, I realized it was definitely not. When the doctors diagnosed me with Hep C chronic version at the age of 26, I was shocked, confused and depressed. I was then a young guy thinking that I'm absolutely healthy and that it would last forever. I felt invincible not even paying attention that I was already overweight and losing energy steadily. Loved overeating, over drinking, over partying. But my body did not. Since I was not uh, paying attention to the signals that my body was sending me every day, it was paying me back with steady degradation without me even noticing it. See, the body never lies. It always cries if something goes wrong. But I was not listening. Now, uh, diagnosed with Hep C and hyperthyroid, I had to stop drinking, not to die prematurely. Had to start taking heavy medication, thinking then that that would be enough to keep me alive and happy. I must say, it did keep me alive, but definitely not happy. My stamina was low, my cognition function was awful, I was moody, had problems socializing due to the lack of lively energy. In other words, the spark was gone at 26 years of age. And then all of a sudden it struck me, I'm doing something wrong. And I must have been doing this for a long time. Otherwise, why are these diseases keep developing and following me all my life? I started reading and uh, practicing systems of the best practitioners in the world of raw food diets, fruit diet, and tried long medical fasting. I learned and lived on vegan, vegetarian, ketogenic diet, to name the few. Practiced yoga, esoteric systems extensively. Kept going to the gym for many years, every day. Not that I needed all of this, but I didn't know back then what exactly I needed. I was willing to try anything and everything just to find something that makes it work. And I did. Such diverse experience definitely opened my eyes and gave me access to many practices or secrets of the world, implementing these strategies and systems drastically improved my life. Once uh, virus-free and healthy, I went back to drinking. I kept at it for almost two years for fun and also to test my new body. And it handled beautifully. I was, of course, testing myself with the doctors continuously, making sure that I was still virus-free, healthy, and the best shape possible. I was, and I felt great. Then I decided to stop abusing my body because I knew it's not gonna go forever like that. It's always better to stop and or make corrections before it's too late. See, now I don't need to drink alcohol heavily to feel happy, to relax or you know be fun in public. I now have uh, enough energy to go by without alcohol or heavy drug use. And now it's mostly natural high. As the saying goes, um, get high on your own supply and there are many various practices that teach you that. And of course, we'll cover this later. Now, don't get me wrong. I still like my cigars sometimes, and I know how to use caffeine or sugar properly. I'm, after all, also human. And when used properly, sugar and carbs, which is the same thing, or caffeine can replace you any drug or alcohol and be as effective, if not better. 
to fast forward to now, at my 40s, um, I'm uh, healthier, happier than I ever was. So how did I do it? First, uh, back in the days when I started feeling that it's getting out of control, I felt bad. I was riding on the train and I remember feeling like I couldn't breathe, but I was just constantly overeating. My body was stuffed with extra food and I was constantly suffocating. So I uh, started experimenting. The first thing I did, I separated my carbs and protein intake. So let's say I would get um, a plate with rice and chicken and salad. Back in the days, I used to work in the city in Manhattan every day for many hours, and we would get Turkish cuisine. They have great chicken chops and, uh, you know, the rice and the salads. And of course, the bread, the bread was amazing. So I would get all of that, and what, what I would do is, I would first eat the carbs, which would be the rice and, uh, you know, salad sometimes bread, but I was trying to cut down on it. And then I would let it be for like uh, as long as I can, like for an hour or two, to actually get the feeling of being hungry again and have the rest, which would be the chicken. So this strategy kept me full and I was not overeating, which is the most important thing as I later found out because my energy improved, uh, my digestion improved, my sleep improved from a simple step like that. Now, uh, the next step that I took, uh, I started experimenting with uh, cutting down uh, or actually eliminating the bread uh, completely and also cutting down on sugar. I learned how to drink uh, my coffee or tea without sugar. Surprisingly enough, uh, in a little, and uh, actually very fast, I uh, recognized and I felt that my body likes it better like that. It works better. See, cutting down carbs and sugar will actually save you a lot of energy down the line. Carbs, which transform to glucose and uh, is the same as sugar, and sugar itself is a fast-burning fuel. It's not sustainable and requires a huge amount of maintenance. It gives you a spike of energy, but then you crush, which is caused mainly by the body trying to cope with the sugar explosions, basically trying to balance it all with insulin production. That is the main reason why sugar and carbs uh, actually makes you more hungry, which uh, is explained by the fact that you're constantly keeping the system busy with fuel that's actually not what your body really needs and losing a lot of energy along the way by digesting it and uh, cleaning after it. Also, sugar is a favorite food for all the bad bacteria and viruses. Now, in healthy bodies, uh, especially of young people, it might not be a great problem. As I you know, notice with my kids, they can live on sugar. But with normal adults, it will definitely cause uh, a loss of energy. Basically, what happens is, is just, it works like a drug. It acts exactly the same way as a drug. And uh, once you start eating it, especially on an everyday basis, it's very hard to stop. Your system requires it already. It changes you know, to, to accommodate this fast fuel and you like the taste and it's very hard to say no. So I understand, I was a sugar junkie for a long time, but it was a physical and mental addiction. After making my peace with carbs and sugar, or after cutting down on it and seeing that actually there's a light on the other side of the tunnel, I reduced the meat intake. At first I replaced it with seafood. You probably heard that constant or frequent meat consumption increases your acidity and causes bad bacteria multiplication. And that, of course, in uh, turn, causes much worse side effects on the long run, which we will also discuss later. After I was able to cut down carbs and uh, sugar and now meat, I learned and started trying fasting. So here, I would like to uh, share with you my two favorite, very easy fasting systems. So the first one is intermediate fasting. And the second is a whole day fast twice a month or once every 14 days about, where you just uh, drink a herb of tea with a spoon of uh, honey. Let's look at the intermittent fasting first. So the intermittent fasting is great. It will give your body the opportunity to clean up after the food intake without actually causing much stress on the system. It does much more than that, but let's not get you confused just, just yet. So uh, this is how I do it, and uh, it's also how it's suggested by professionals. I have my dinner um, at 6 p.m. 
And by the way, I try not to drink anything sweet after that or in between meals. It's important because sugar makes you hungry. Then, uh, you know, it's easier to go to sleep because my stomach is empty and uh, when I wake up, it, I feel much better. I start eating only next day, which you would call a last, I mean, a late breakfast at 12 p.m. So you basically uh, eat during the day in a window of six to eight hours, you can uh, take the two or three meals depending on your on your body type on what type of exercises you are doing how many times you're going to the gym basically how much energy do you need I have noticed that the less I eat the more energy I get but that's of course if I eat the right food so uh, for me right now I eat two times a day 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. and I used to eat three times a day uh, 12 p.m. 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. And that was when I was exercising every day, uh, weightlifting. So, you know, I needed that extra punch, you know, to be able to push some weights in the gym. But if you just like uh, calisthenics, dancing, swimming, running, you really don't need to eat that much. I once fasted for 21 days. I already mentioned this somewhere. You probably heard of it already from me. And, uh, you know, for 21 days straight, there was no food and just uh, herbal tea and a spoon of honey for the, each cup of herbal tea. And I would drink two to three liters a day of that type of tea and also a little water. But that was, that was it for 21 days. And I survived. And I was actually doing push-ups every day as well. Of course, I don't recommend you do this right away. I'm just giving you an example of what I did, what you know, went through, and I'll try to go again step by step in consecutive order so you understand what I did for myself to be able to get to know my system. I was able to lose weight and get more mind clarity, but uh, it took a lot of trial and error, so uh, I'm gonna try to first tell you how I did it and then I will suggest how it can be done uh, so you don't put too much stress. You take it step by step, little by little, you know, baby steps. So you know, I've been eating like that for a long time already with intermediate fastings from 6 p.m. to 12 uh, p.m. next day. So that's what? That's um, 18 hours of uh, not eating and only six hours of eating. And don't be scared. Uh, there are people out there that, uh, that, you know, eat once a day and they're in perfect body shape and their physique is just incredible. Of course, I don't recommend doing that. I mean, you can enjoy your food and two to three times a day if you eat proper food in these time frames, you're gonna be energized, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna enjoy your food, you're gonna have great amount of energy, mind clarity, your body will have time to clean itself after the food intake, and it just feels great. And I know that some of you might think that, oh my God, uh, I wake up early in the morning at 7 a.m., let's say, or 6 a.m., or I don't know. I personally wake up at 7.40, right? And uh, what do you do before 12 p.m.? Some of you might think or might say, I get hungry, I get moody, I can function if I don't eat, I develop headache. So I have a very cool drink for you. It's called Bulletproof Coffee. This drink is perfect for the mind and soul. And that, of course, if you like coffee, but actually you can you know, do the same drink with tea, if you like tea more. It will actually suppress hunger and feed your brain and will not break your fast. So again, it's called Bulletproof Coffee. Uh, look it up. They sell it in uh, pre-made packs. You can just buy it online. It will be shipped to you. It's very easy. Just open a pack and add it to your favorite cup of coffee or tea. Or you can actually make it yourself. Uh, you know, you can just buy ingredients. It's MCT oil, it's um, coconut oil, clarified butter or ghee. I personally like to add cinnamon and even heavy cream a little bit. If you like it sweet, you can also add the sugar replacements such as Splenda or Stevia or otherwise called Truvia. So in the morning I have this coffee sometime between 8 and 10 a.m. And again, I wake up at 7.40. At first, I don't even want to eat. That's actually another thing. If you don't eat right before you go to sleep, you wake up not hungry. I noticed when I used to eat right before bed, I would wake up hungry like crazy. So I would start eating again, and uh, that's how I would keep my system constantly running. But now, since I give my body enough break, when I go to sleep, let's say I stop eating at 6 p.m., and then I go to sleep at 12 a.m. or 1 a.m., my body already, while I sleep, uh, goes into fasting mode. And when I wake up, it's those hours that you really don't want to eat anymore. 
So then when I need my energy boost at about 8 to 10 uh, a.m., let's say, I need to sit down by the computer and start working, and I want that feeling in my body, you know, that I'm used to from the coffee kick, I, uh, you know, I get my bulletproof coffee going. The caffeine in this coffee will enter your system smoothly, dampened by good fats like coconut oil and ghee. It basically uh, doesn't let the caffeine to absorb quickly, keeping me energized long into the day. Of course, you can try to make it your own. Um, eliminate some ingredients or change them to something else if, it's, you know, if they're conflicting with your health issues or your tastes. Also, if you're on the run and you wanna grab another cup of coffee, just add heavy cream to it. Don't use half and half or milk. Uh, heavy cream is actually much better. I understand that some people with high cholesterol levels uh, will probably be very cautious about it. So I again urge you that you should look into your personal condition seriously and uh, see if there's some workarounds that you can find. But of course, I will try to cover as much as I can. And again, the more you introduce yourself to these little tricks of what's called the keto diet, the more your body will learn to use fat for fuel and uh, the cholesterol level should actually drop instead of climbing. But again, it all depends where you're at right now. Take it slow, just take everything you can from me and then always consult your physician or find information online that explains exactly what you should do in your particular situation. So implementing these keto diet or ketogenic diet tricks into your everyday life little by little will greatly improve your cognition, mind clarity, and will stabilize your energy levels throughout the day. So going back to my story, once my personal body adjusted to that in the past and I lost extra weight, a lot of it actually, here's the picture of it, coming down from 225 to 175 for the past almost five years already. I again started um, fasting, not only intermittent fasting, but I implemented the one day fast uh, done each 14 days, which is uh, basically called an Ekadashi fast. The link to the schedule of Ekadashi is in the description. It's a calendar, a lunar calendar that shows you which day is best for fasting. So you may ask what the moon has to do with it. To answer that, let me give you an example how moon affects all the water body collections in the world. Remember the low and high tides of oceans and rivers? Well, they are caused by the moon or by the moon phase or actually by the position of the moon in relation to the earth. Since our bodies uh, are mostly made of water, it's easy to imagine that the moon affects not only the oceans and the rivers, but also the water in our bodies. In simple words, it either keeps the water up or releases the grip, allowing the easy disposal of it from the body which can drastically help toxin elimination, mucus elimination, dead cell elimination. And of course, to those who are interested, it also helps lose some extra weight as well. Again, when it's done on proper days, it's the most effective and uh, very easy to do as well. So it works like this. I have my dinner at uh, about 6 to 8 p.m. day before the fast. And the next day I eat only uh, my dinner at about 8, uh, 8 p.m. again when the sun goes down, skipping my breakfast and the lunch. Here again, it's worth mentioning that if you have health issues, you always should consult with your physician before starting any diet and or fasting regimes. Like for example, people with diabetes should always monitor their glucose level, or people with blood pressure problems and heart disease should uh, always watch their electrolytes. However, don't get discouraged. There's always a solution if there's a will. So this diet plan, and uh, here I wanna actually um, go back to the word diet. Diet does not mean starvation. Diet means discipline. So this discipline of food intake that I've been practicing for many years now helped me lose weight. My memory got better, my energy got better, but most importantly, it made me stronger. It greatly improved my immune system against viruses. Also, this diet helped me get rid of sugar addiction. I can control it, I can use it when I want to, but it does not control me. It's like I'm constantly happy, I have this vibrant feeling of happiness in my body that I try to maintain at all times and I have my downtimes only when I swerve back to my old habit mostly of overeating which I do rarely and intentionally for instant gratification on so-called cheat days and also to test my willpower 
but I always come back remembering that my new diet is much better, more sustainable, keeps me happy. My sleep is better. I have no gut issues. My stomach and body is happy and keeps me happy. My mind, as I mentioned, is much clearer. It's easier to come up with a plan and to stick to the plan. I don't use pills anymore and rarely see a doctor just for a regular checkup. Of course, there are other things that help me as well. It's a complex of things, or what I like to call them drills, that uh, I will be covering in the next videos. It will include uh, the elements of mild fitness, yoga, meditation, breathing exercise, and cold water treatments. I will answer the most frequently asked questions, like is there enough vitamins and proteins in fruits and vegetables? Do prescription drugs have effects or negative effects, and on what? Do I need to have vegetables? vegetables in my meal plans and why, how to get rid of gas problems, how to sleep better, how to be able to stay on course, and much more. To help me and other people that will be watching these videos, please comment below. Don't be shy to share your concerns and ask questions. I will be happy to address them all. Please remember, discipline and effective strategy is the way to success. See you in a little bit. Cheers.